In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Ash Wednesday is a curious day, I think. A curious Wednesday. Did you know that we have a church service here in this very sanctuary every other Wednesday of the year? And those services are generally all light and love and saintliness, and yet few people attend. This Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, is probably the hardest church service of the year, alongside Good Friday. This is the day when we are compelled through this worship service to consider our own sinfulness and what we might do about it. Every other Wednesday of the year, the music is usually light and joyful. This day, the cello cries beautifully, but mournfully, to remind us how this day is different. Hear again the opening words of this service. Make in us contrite hearts, lamenting our sins, acknowledging our wretchedness. Heavy words, contrition, lamentation, wretchedness, repentance, dust and ashes, or as we say, Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Those are our funeral words, our burial words, words we say at times of death, and yet they are also today's words, hard words, difficult. And yet, the reason why Ash Wednesday is curious to me is because we'll have easily I said earlier 10 times, I think maybe 100 times the attendance on this Wednesday than we have on a usual happy, joyful Wednesday. It is curious to me. It says to me that there must be something about this day, about this service, something about these hard words something about ashes and dust and death that call out to us today and find us ready, if not to respond, at least to come and listen, if only for one day. In this church, we tend to, uh, on Sunday, our sermons, our homilies, uh, Uh, during the week, tend to not focus on sin. Today is one of the few days of the year when we turn ourselves to that difficult topic. We have to be clear, though. When we say that this day, if you read commentaries and other sermons and, uh, and things about uh, Ash Wednesday, uh, that theme of death will be ever-present. Some scholars even say this day is a day about death, a day when we use the ashes to look into our own mortality. But still we have to be careful and clear, I think, when we say that this day is about death, if we say that, that it is, we're not really talking about, maybe a little bit, but not... Uh, in the main thrust of it, not talking about our biological death. Because we are, after all, resurrection people. We are Easter people. Which means that because of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, we don't have to fear the death of our mortal body. This day is, in some way, about death but it is the living death of our spirit in this life that we bring upon ourselves because of our sin, that living death that we allow to infect us and to rot us from the inside out. So long as we refuse to name it, when we 
willingly continue to live in it and we refuse to turn from it. That is the beginning of what this day offers us. The invitation to turn from the living death that we choose for ourselves most days of our life. This day is about the living death of sin and how it damages our relationship with God and destroys or damages our relationships with each other. And how our sinful choices obstruct all of the good and beautiful things that God has made us capable of. I read the words of the Bishop of Pittsburgh. His name is Dorsey McConnell. He put it this way. He said, we were made to love, but our hate and our disdain and our indifference make ashes of love. He said, we were made to give, and instead we steal and hoard and accumulate though time will make ashes of all that we have. He said we're made to be living, breathing prayers to God, and instead we build temples to ourselves on foundations of dust. He said we become so inured to our own sin that we think almost nothing of it, believing that on balance we're good people. But on this day, like no other day, ashes are a reminder that in spite of all that we do to hide it, inside, because of our cho choice to sin, we are slowly wasting away from our own self-indulgence and conceit. Ashes, he wrote, are a witness that everything that we desire that is not God or of God or God's will everything that we desire that is not that will be like our bodies and sooner or later be burned and plowed under and no plan, no action or system can alter that. So long as there is unacknowledged, unrepented sin, the ashes alone remain. And those are hard words. Hard words for me not just to speak but to hear and to take into my own heart as I examine my own life. This is the day, as someone else wrote, that we not only take up these hard words and these hard topics, we actually present ourselves to have our face literally rubbed into it. But that is not the end of this day. Examining our lives and seeing the places where we have taken beauty and turned it into ash cannot be the end of this day. It cannot be the only reason for this day. We are resurrection people. And many have pointed out rightly that in order to get to the empty tomb, we have to first climb the mountain of Calvary. But... We are never called to stay there. This day is not about inviting each other to wallow in our brokenness and to beat our, our chests and to say, woe is me. This day is about an invitation from God to begin to take that look at ourselves, not so that we can stay there at Calvary, but so that we can turn from it and take a step towards the empty tomb. This day and this season, we come together to name our sins and to say to ourselves, to one another and to God, that we are sick and tired of the living death of sin that we have condemned ourselves to, that we are sick and tired of being estranged from God and from each other because we choose sin over God's will for us. And today, this day, we resolve to do something about it, to change, to turn back to God. Today is the day when we are invited by the church to reach out and grasp God's outstretched hand and to say yes to his offer to help us out of our sins. Because the fact of the matter is we cannot do it on our own. 
And the good news is that God always, from the beginning, has promised to help us out of the pits of despair that we so often throw ourselves into. We have only to look. The scriptures are full of the examples of God persevering in his love for us despite our own bad choices. But we can begin at the beginning and look at the example of the Garden of Eden to see that that truth, even from the beginning, Adam and Eve did what God said not to do and they hurt themselves because of it. They hurt their own relationship one to another and they hurt their relationship with God. Did you ever notice that in the story of the Garden of Eden of the, what we call the fall? When God confronts Adam about what he's done? Did you ever notice just exactly what Adam says to God? It sounds just like us. And God says, why did you do that, what I told you not to do? Adam says, that woman that you gave me, right? It's everybody's fault but my own. That is a metaphor for the fact that our sins rupture our horizontal relationships with each other and our vertical relationship with God. Our choices do that. Did you notice in that story the punishment prescribed for what they did was death? But God did not have the heart for it. God loved them too much. He saw their nakedness and he gave them clothes. They left Eden. Yes, that was the consequence of their own choice. They left Eden. But God went out with them. Always staying by them in their self-chosen exile. The message there and throughout the scriptures is that God will not abandon us to our sins. He gives us the freedom, it's true, to hurt ourselves with sin. And he weeps, I believe, when we choose sin over goodness. But he never leaves us. We turn our backs on God and he always calls us back. Always. Saying over and over again through the prophets, through these scriptures, repent, turn around, face me again, see me, love me, and let me love and help you. That is the second part of this day, recognizing that this is God's call to us, not just to stay at Calvary, but to take that first step towards the empty tomb. This is the day, and this is the season, when we remember the countless moments in our lives when we have willfully eaten of the forbidden fruit, when we have willfully said that we can decide what is best for us and God can take a hike. This is the day when we remember the times that we have refused to be who God has called us to be, when we have demanded to be the only God and the only authority in our lives. Today is a day to remember and to regret to stop, to apologize in ashes, but then to reach out to God again because he is reaching out to us. Because today does not have to be a day of death after all. Today can, is supposed to be and can be that first tenuous step taken towards a new life as repentance is the first step taken towards resurrection. So remember today that you are dust, and to dust your mortal body shall return. But remember as well that God will never abandon you, and that the spirit that lives inside of you need not be dust and need not be so dusty, because you already belong to Jesus Christ, as do I. It's just that we've been away from home for a while. Today is the invitation to come home to the God who loves us and misses us. Amen.